Hello and welcome in to another week of great action in college football with the Line Movers Network. I am David Dorman here tonight with Tyler Liddick and Ian Robbins, and we're going to uh, discuss college football, the landscape, what's going on. Uh, once again, please follow us, the Line Movers Network, on Twitter at the underscore LM Network. And uh, come check us out on YouTube, on our YouTube channel at the Line Movers Network. And uh, all our podcasts, wherever you find your pod, wherever you uh, find all your podcasts. So let's jump right into it tonight. We're going to have a little different uh, of the way we're going to go at things. We're going to uh, go with the games and the picks last. First, we're going to discuss the landscape of college football, what's going on, the Heisman, conference races. Uh, playoff odds on uh, will certain schools make the final four and we'll just take it from there uh, again tonight with my top my top college football experts Tyler Liddick and Ian Robbins I'm David Dorman uh, with the line movers network and let's get right into it uh, let's bring up and discuss first uh, guys Cincinnati uh, I find this very interesting Cincinnati because there's so many aspects that this can go Cincinnati we know is in the top five in America no matter what poll we're looking so the playoffs are definitely a discussion point their quarterback Desmond Ritter is in the Heisman uh, discussion uh, deservedly so his team's undefeated he's won both big games on the road and they're off to a great start um, and that also will bring in the playoff odds because Cincinnati's playoff odds and how that affects other schools getting in. So let's start it. Uh, Tyler, I'll let you take it away. Good evening. And uh, take it away with uh, what you feel, uh, and any angle you like. Maybe I think you got a Heisman uh, look. Yeah, glad to be back. Um, it was a good week off. So Desmond Ritter, I do like – the 20 to one option there on him. I think that's probably your best play. If you're going to play Cincinnati at any angle right now. Um, I know, I think we just discussed their plus plus one ten to make the playoff, which as the number two team and their, with their remaining schedule, um, you look at that and you think they should be able to get to the point of making the playoff or remaining undefeated, which means you would assume they are in um, according to the resume last year and this year. Uh, left out last year so I think they're owed one um, and then where would that put Desmond Ritter quarterback of Cincinnati uh, obviously first grade talent for the NFL or first round grade for the NFL so he has the the, the skills um, what does he do statistically for the rest of the year they're going to run the score up on pretty much everyone they play. Uh, competition isn't much, but we've seen players win Heisman's by running the score up before. Um, Steve Spurrier used to run the score up for years and years and years as a head coach, and he's had Heisman's. So I do think that they can, uh, he could win it. Um, I also have a ticket on Kenny Pickett from Pittsburgh um, at 40 to one. Now, the angle there for me was if they beat Clemson this upcoming week, I got it a week ago um, with the thought that they would be playing Clemson. And if they beat, if they win that matchup, then that ticket is good for basically uh, Pitt's ACC championship hopes. So if Pitt would kind of win the ACC championship hopes, which odds are a lot less on that um, than what you could get Pickett at Heisman at that point in time. So I think um, it, it you're better off, going with the quarterback to win the Heisman on um, something like that. But I know Ian has a lot of good future outlooks when it comes to conferences. So I guess we can, we can touch on that real quick before we get into some games this week. Yeah. Just, you know, look at the landscape. This is a good time to kind of reset as we head to the second to last weekend in October of games and a couple of great points, looking at different ways to attack some different numbers. So you got Cincinnati who's sitting there, ranked number two, odds to make the playoffs. And we assume that they're going to win out based on the win probabilities they are. About plus 110 to make the playoffs, which I think is pretty good value still. And so you're saying it's, if it's 50-50 to make the playoffs, then plus 110 you're getting better than 50% chance on your money. But then Desmond Ritter, 
sitting there at 20 to one, just like Tyler said, just makes that value even more because if they are, they are undefeated, he will be a finalist. So you will have a shot there. A um, couple other numbers that jump out to me as far as teams to make the playoffs based on some of their outlooks with their conference alignments. I'm going to see an Ohio State minus 105 to make the playoffs. Now this number, if they win out, they're going to make the playoffs. If they win the Big Ten, most likely they're going to make the playoffs. So minus 105. So then I take a look at what their Big Ten number is to win the conference, and that's minus 150. So I take a look at that and say, well, if Ohio State wins the Big Ten at minus 150, that means they're going to make the playoffs at minus 105. So then you take the minus 105 number to make the playoffs. And I think there is value there because that's about a 50-50 shot. And Ohio State still has a lot left on their schedule. But if they are that big a favorite, about 55% to win the Big Ten, that means they're going to be higher than 50, about that same percentage to win, to make the playoff. And you're getting 50% right now to make the playoff. So I do think there's value there. One other team I'm looking at is a potential to make the playoff. And it, with the, the landscape right now, it's so wide open. College football is at a, a state where there's a large amount of parity with Clemson being down with Alabama having a loss. Alabama and Georgia are clearly one too, but beyond that, you know, we don't, we don't know. We, we don't, we just, there's so many unknowns. And I'm looking at a team like Old Miss, 20 to 1. And we, they're sitting there with one loss. Their only loss is to Alabama. They have currently one of the Heisman top hopefuls at Matt Corral, Lane Kiffin, a polarizing coach, big time offense. And they're only lost to Alabama. And they have some winnable games that are going to put themselves on the radar to, to close out. And if they do run the table and finish 10 and 1, 11 and 1 in the regular season, they will not make the SEC championship game. That will be left to Alabama against Georgia. And if Georgia does end up eliminating Alabama, Ole Miss, if, if things happen, if Georgia beat, if Georgia beats Alabama in the championship game, if Cincinnati happens to have a slip up, if a spot's open, maybe Ole Miss gets in there with as a one loss SEC team, only lost to Alabama. It's possible at 20 to one, it might be worth it for them to potentially win out. Um, you're not going to get any value on their quarterback winning the Heisman. That's for sure. So maybe something to look at just a different angle, different way that, to create some kind of chaos. Um, another way that I'm going to look at maybe attacking the future board in the Heisman race at a different angle, Georgia is the clear number one. Georgia looks like the best team. Georgia had a quarterback change, had a quarterback change recently. Stetson Bennett took over and they took off. That, that's kind of where they, they had their JT Daniel started the first game. They struggled a bit on offense. Now JT Daniel, uh, Stetson Bennett is now in a quarterback. Their offense, they've been scoring 30 plus points a game. They're clearly number one. If somebody in Georgia wants to get to that Heisman finalist, it's usually the number one team in the country, usually has some kind of rep in those awards. He's sitting 80 to one right now. Maybe not, maybe worth a little bit of a sprinkle if they continue, because he's not going to sit if they lose, if they keep winning. He's only going to take a seat if they lose. So if they keep winning 80 to one, I think those numbers are going to creep down and down and down and down. So it's a little bit of a look on some outlooks. Um, I know we could talk about some conferences take a look at what the landscape is there with some numbers and look at some angles with some percentages, see if we could some, find some value in some of these conference future outlooks. That's great job guys. And, and some incredible points brought up. And I just want to emphasize one thing that Ian said, and Tyler was also going at it, Ohio state to make the playoffs. Ian told us was minus one Oh five. Ohio state to win the big 10 is minus one fifty. To Tyler and Ian's point, if Ohio State runs the table and wins the Big Ten, they'll, the, the committee will not see the Oregon loss, and they're going to the playoffs. It's Ohio State. It's the name. It's the brand. They're going. Why lay 150 if you could lay 105? Incredible points by you guys. Yeah, um, I guess that would, that would lead us right into the conference con conversation. And – um, big matchup next week in Ohio State with Columbus and in Columbus with Penn State, Ohio State. And if, if you're looking to play um, conferences and when when you look at the Big East, um, that, that game's probably going to be a seven, seven point spread, I'd assume, maybe maybe a little more um, going into Columbus. I think you're better off just playing Penn State to win the division at 25 to one, which is posted right now. Um, what, what's the sense of, of, uh, taking that Ohio state ticket, um, when you can just get a better number, I, I think the, the value here 
Um, looking at Penn State, they don't have a loss in that side of their conference, which they still have to play Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State, so they do control their own destiny. Um, so all that talk about we we only lost to Iowa because of our quarterback being hurt, well, I guess uh, it's time for Penn State to prove that, and uh, now is the best time for them to beat Ohio State with the um, inability to stop the run for Ohio State this year and Penn State's inability to run the ball that could help Penn State. Uh, so that's probably your best angle uh, at a Penn State ticket right now in the Big East as well. Tyler, yeah. does Penn State have the offensive punch, firepower to beat those three top teams? Uh, I think if – I don't really think they need the offense. Their defense is, is so good that I think awesome. as long as their offense is scoring points, uh, they'll be all right. The problem is Clifford has to be healthy and he has to be able to throw the quarterback, uh, throw the ball. Their wide receivers are good. Parker and, and Dodson are both um, going to be in the NFL. Awesome. So I don't think they're going to have an issue talent wise. I think the problem here is if Cliff, Clifford's fully healthy. Yeah. And to yeah. Like the Sorry. yeah. Um, yeah. Penn State 25 to one to win. I, I think them and Ohio State are definitely on a different tier. That's definitely way to attack it. And Tyler, you said you get 25 to one next week for Penn State to win. On the other side, Iowa, after their loss, slips down to five to one to win the conference. And in a spot where we all assume they'd be in the conference championship game, I don't think that assumption changes. Yes, they have a loss. Yes, they have to slip up to Purdue. But there's still one loss in their side. They're going to be favorites on the way out. Uh, I think they still make that conference title game. And at five to one, they're not going to be five to one in the money line to win that game. I think they're going to get some value on that side as well, especially when you're looking at the other side of the conference where you got undefeated Michigan, undefeated Michigan State, Penn State, Ohio State. So they're going to be playing each other, beating each other up. And Iowa, who is going to be favorite for the rest of the season, could be sitting there after that loss. So the pressure's off of the undefeated season. So maybe they have a chance to, to sneak in there at a decent number, a little bit more value than you otherwise would in a conference title game. That's a great point. Let me ask you guys one question about that. This week, we, you brought up the Michigan-Michigan State scenarios. This week, Michigan plays Northwestern at home in Ann Arbor. I look for them to roll Northwestern out of the building. So then that sets up next weekend in, in East Lansing, Michigan-Michigan State. The winner is hot as can be. They're what, 8-0? They're going to be top four or five in the country. Then Ohio State and Penn State are going to go at each other. How's this going to go at it? Elimination games. It's, it's like a Final Four scenario. Uh, it, it's, it's truly a round-robin situation, and, and one team is going to be left. Um, Penn State does have the, the conference loss, and, and they're at a little bit of a disadvantage, but they're going to have a chance to play everybody. You know, if Penn State goes out and beats Ohio State, now Ohio State's got one loss. And Penn State's got the win over them. And then every, everyone has a chance. Uh, and um, it, it's going to be a crazy, crazy ride. I think you're going to give the advantage to those two teams that do win, and it's going to be fun, fun ride, see how they play, see how injuries affect um, the situation, but it's going to be definitely something to watch and just trying to pick off numbers with values right now. Numbers, percentages, and values are, I think, the way to go to pick up some of these conferences that are truly unpredictable at this point. That's a great point, and the Big Ten is going to be crazy going down the stretch. And I have to agree with you. I was sitting on that weak side with Minnesota and Illinois and Nebraska, and they're laughing all the way. Yeah, I know they lost last week to Purdue. But like you said, Tyler said, Penn State's going to play a round robin against all these schools in the Big Ten. And I was not. Uh, let's look at another conference. Uh, the ACC uh, coming into the season, they didn't need to play the ACC uh, conference games because Clemson was an odds on for sure, going to win every game by 40. But all of a sudden, Clemson's not even the favorite. Clemson's sitting plus 320 to win the ACC. Pittsburgh becomes the favorite now with plus 130. Remember, Pittsburgh hosts Clemson this week. North Carolina State, fresh off a big win against Boston College, is sitting at, five, at plus 550, five and a half to one. And undefeated Wake Forest, who we've talked about on this show many times before, is plus 650. This is another great uh, conference race, the ACC. How do you guys see this one going down? 
Yeah. So, uh, Tyler, you have the ticket on on Pickett with Pittsburgh and, and Clemson coming up. So why don't you talk about that? Because I, I liked your breakdown. I think you had a, a good point with what you were taking there. Yeah, that matchup is is this weekend. I grabbed that, I think, a week and a half, two weeks ago. There was a bunch of guys out west on it. I think we all know who they are. Um, point is, if Pickett Pitt, – well, his numbers are ridiculous right now as well. I mean, he, he the numbers that Pickett's putting up, I mean, they're video game type numbers. So, with that being said, their offense is scoring a ton of points. I mean, nobody's even looked into that right now at this point in time because of it's it's Pittsburgh, um, and they did lose, I think, to Central Michigan or Western Michigan, one of the Michigans, earlier in the season. It was a bad loss. Uh, at this point, like you said, they're plus 130 to win the division. Uh, if you're going to pick someone to win the ACC, I think you look for some value, which I, I think you mentioned it's in Virginia. And if, if Pittsburgh does win the ACC – does that put them in the playoff? Probably not, but it does put them in a place where they won the ACC and Kenny Pickett's going to have some great numbers and he's going to have one more chance in prime time to showcase himself. So um, that 40 to one tickets already down to 22 to one uh, Desmond Ritter, I think is better value in the 20 to one range. Now that Pickett's down 22 to one, I think the value has gone, but I, I just think, there is no true um, Goliath in the ACC this year. There's absolutely nobody that like, and UNC could have had a good team, Sam Howe, um, great returning quarterback, but they're questionable everywhere else on the field. So that went down the shoots. NC State um, lost games they shouldn't have. Everybody's just questionable. Miami is just awful. 19 returning starters, complete dumpster fire down in Miami. So Really, it, it kind of all lays in Kenny Pickett's hands if Kenny Pickett wants to take care of business this weekend. And with the way Clemson's playing right now, I don't see any reason why he couldn't do that. Great. Right. Hey, I look at that conference. Yeah. I'm going to look at the numbers. I'm going to try to look division to division because we're going to have a, a conference title matchup and it's going to be one winner of a division versus another side of the division for the conference title. And Pitt and Virginia are sitting at the top cut their their side of the conference and what well, Pitt is is on top undefeated in conference Virginia does have two losses in conference so they're playing from a little bit behind but they're sitting there at 16 to 1 and I think their big hurdle is Pittsburgh who they will get a chance to play and if you look at Pitt if they run the table they run the table I think that picking up the, the value a uh, uh, ticket on, on picket is exactly what Tyler said I'm not going to take it in a plus one third but I will look if they happen to lose this weekend against Clemson, which we know Clemson has talent and Pittsburgh might not be ready for the prime time, prime time spot. Then Virginia is sitting there with a chance to control their own destiny to the conference title game at 16 to one. And I think that's where I'm looking at the value. I think that number is a little bit high considering they have a clear path on the other side, Clemson, NC state and wake forest Clemson being is still plus three twenty to win the conference. They already have a loss to NC state wake forest is undefeated. Uh, I think Clemson's pulling a lot of value based on name value, based on the fact that they were minus 5,000, whatever it was, whatever they always are to win the ACC. So I think there's still a little bit of value there on the other side. It's going to play out, but Clemson could play spoiler to a couple of these teams. And I want to look for a 16 to one who has a legitimate shot at getting to that game. So I'm looking at Virginia as my best play right now as a future in the ACC. I like that. I might have to jump on that one. Ian and UVA hasn't lost in the conference yet. Have they? They have a couple losses in the conference, yes, but they have oh, a they chance do. to control. If Pittsburgh does slip up, they will play each other with a chance to make that. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry about that. And I ripped on Clemson in the ACC in the intro, but I got to give some more grief also to another school because everyone was saying if it wasn't Clemson, it's for sure North Carolina. And North Carolina, had, I'm not sure who's looked worse, North Carolina or Clemson. So I should have put them both uh, on Main Street there. So. Uh, let's go out west. Let's check out the Pac-12. Oregon gets the huge win uh, nationally going into Ohio State and then stubs its toe going to Stanford. Uh, Oregon still sits as the conference favorite to win the Pac-12 at plus 160. Utah, who all of a sudden is red hot, couldn't do anything in the non-conference, switches quarterbacks. 
all, all of a sudden is red hot in Pac-12 conference play. They're at about double your money. They're at about two plus two, 210 to win the Pac. And uh, a school I know we're going to bring up here because both you guys are high in them, and I completely agree, Oregon State sitting at 16 to one to win the pack. I know they were playing great ball, then took a tough loss to Wazoo last week in the Palouse. Uh, Ian, how do you see the pack 12 coming out? So I'm going to look at this as a similar lens as I looked at the other conferences and I'm going to look at division by division. So I look at Oregon and Oregon state are really the top two teams in their division. Now Oregon state sitting there with one conference loss. We've mentioned Washington state. They're sitting at 16 to one to win. Uh, now, can they do they have a path to the title? game? That's what we're looking at. Do they have a path to the title game? Then they give themselves a chance. And with Oregon State, I think absolutely they do. They will play Oregon in the, in the Civil War the last week of the season. But now, Oregon has a little bit of a tougher schedule. They're an underdog this week at UCLA. They're going to be playing at Utah, which they might be an underdog in that game. So that's two potential losses, plus the fact that Oregon State will be playing Oregon. And they both have one conference loss right now. So I think Oregon State is more in the driver's seat right now to make that title game and then 16 to one it was 18 to one earlier when I looked this morning, 16 to one. Now that's some serious value for a team to potentially have a chance. Completely agree. Uh, Tyler, you have any opinions, any tickets uh, out West in the pack? Uh, that would be a story for all ages if Oregon state cashes tickets in basketball and basketball <laughs> this year, right. monster tickets for everyone. <laughs> Uh, I think I think every better will be Oregon State fans for life. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a great point. Let one more conference we're going to look at here. And it was Oklahoma's to win in the preseason. And it still looked like it still looks like Oklahoma's to win the Big 12 because currently a big favorite at minus 225 to win the Big 12. Behind them is their rival in Oklahoma State, who just is coming off a huge win against Texas and is still undefeated themselves. But they have a huge battle this week because they're going into Ames to play Iowa State. Oklahoma State currently sits at five to win, five to one to win the Big 12. A couple other schools that I know uh, might get discussed that are looking good all of a sudden, Iowa State to win the conference, six to one. Baylor, who's looked very impressive. Uh, not many people spoke about them in the preseason. Baylor, 12 to 1 uh, to win the Big 12. And for all you Texas fans, 30 to 1, probably not happen, uh, happening this year with uh, Sarkeesian. Uh, guys, we see anything? We have any breakdowns? We have any opinions, tickets, avenues to uh, a win here? Yeah, um, something different about the Big 12, the way they set up their conference is they're not division-based. There's 10 teams in the Big 12. They play a round-robin schedule. The top two teams at the end make the conference title game. So there's not there's not the whole con- – there's, there's not the conference. So we, we're fighting for one of the top two spots. It's a little different. I think the top three teams are likely to be in there. And Baylor has a chance. But some news that broke this week with LSU's coach job, coach, uh, job opening happening – I think Dave Aranda, coach at Baylor, who was a former defensive coordinator at LSU, might have the inside track to that job. Um, I think that might become a little distraction as, as time goes on. I think Baylor's done a great job with their program, turning it around ever since um, Coach Rule, Matt Rule was there. And I think they definitely have a solid program in place. I think things might become a distraction. I think their talent level is a little bit below. So I want to focus on that Iowa State, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma match. I'm going to eliminate Oklahoma from any value discussion. I think they're the best team. I think they will make the title game. Who faces them? Oklahoma State, look, five to one. Iowa State, eight to one. Will they be that in a game? I don't think so. Uh, the winner of that game this weekend has an inside track. Iowa State is minus seven in that game. Large favorites, yet less a bigger underdog in the conference. I think that's where the value lies, Iowa State. Tyler, anything to add in the Big 12? I've been a I've been an Oklahoma State fan all year, and that line this weekend screams trap. Um, you know, getting seven points as the number eight team in the nation uh, after a win last week on the road 
it, it screams trap. We've seen Arkansas do that this year, get a big win and then go on the road for another big game. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to play this one. I think you could any, any way you take it, um, you could either see Iowa state Baylor or Oklahoma state playing Oklahoma. So I think your best chance is probably Oklahoma here, but where's the value in that? It's pretty much a whole stay away for me. I, I think Oklahoma is going to end up winning this conference, uh, but I don't see much value anywhere. That's great stuff. Uh, that's a great discussion on the landscape of college football. Ian and Tyler gave you some great angles, avenues past to some conference championships to yes or no, we'll make the final four in college football. So I hope everyone was taking notes because Tyler and Ian have been red, red hot. And now to everyone in America's favorite segment in America, Rapid Fire College Football Picks Line Movers Network. Red Hot. We are, uh, we're not going to have any featured games. Everyone's going to still be a rapid fire, and we're going to go through these. Again, thank you for uh, tuning in tonight uh, to the Line Movers Network. Follow us on Twitter at the underscore LM Network, and follow along at our YouTube channel at the Line Movers Network. And uh, we uh, find all our podcasts wherever you find all, wherever you uh, go search for all your podcasts. So again, Tyler Liddick, Ian Robbins, my college football experts. I'm David Dorman. Here we go. Rapid fire college football week number seven. We just discussed this basically without the game itself. The eighth ranked Cowboys of Oklahoma State, coached by Mike Gundy, is going into Iowa State and Ames this week. Coming into the season, everyone had Iowa State as the eighth team in the country and Oklahoma State not ranked. Well, the, everything's flipped over here, but Iowa State still a seven-point favorite at home with a total of 47. Tyler, what do we see? Yeah, there's one game a week in college football that screams trap, and this is the one this week. Uh, it doesn't make sense why Oklahoma State's getting seven. Um, and then you even – equivalent the three points Iowa State's given them for being at home, which is kind of them saying it's it's 10 points. Uh, I don't know. The way I see this game, defense travels. Oklahoma State has proven to play great defense all season long. Uh, Iowa State, Brock Purdy never lost in October. Do I think that continues? I don't know. It's a close game. Uh, I think Oklahoma State has the better quarterback in this matchup. Uh, again, it's a trap game. I, I, I kind of want to stay completely away and, and look and see what happens in game here. But if I had to play it, I would take the seven points or look for a seven and a half. Uh, but like I said, don't be surprised if, if you fall into the trap. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you there. The, the line definitely screams out a, a huge question mark when you, when you see that unranked team posting a number, a top 10 team being that big of a favorite. Iowa State, definitely a, a team that gets better at the end under Coach Campbell, Brock Purdy, Reese Hall. Uh, definitely have the talent level to play with Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's been winning on defense, though. This is a new Oklahoma State Cowboy team. They responded. They came back in that game last week against Texas, and that kind of showed a second level that I don't know if we've seen from this Cowboy team in the past. And seven points is a lot of points. Iowa State is a very scrappy, good team, but they're not really – team a team that blows out better teams they kind of come from behind it they're better as the hunter as opposed to the hunted and as a favorite and players will know the spread no oklahoma state will know that they are touchdown underdogs going to iowa state and they carry that i think that's a little bit too much live betting is definitely a key if you can get iowa state under three live that might be a look you can get oklahoma state anything above seven that's a look for me there uh, not too many points though under might be a look as well moving along one of college football's greatest rivalries. The USC Trojans are limping in to South Bend to play the Fighting Irish. Notre Dame is a six and a half point favorite, a total of 57. Ian. Uh, I don't think USC has anything left this year. They're on to next year, thinking about next year, worried about next year. Notre Dame plays hard. Coach Kelly always has a plane to finish the season. I mean, Notre Dame lay the points. Tyler. Yeah, I think Notre Dame could run the score up on USC as well. 
I, I could see this game going over with both teams not really having any any um desire to play defense this Saturday. USC's kind of waiting for next year who's going to be the coach, who's going to be on the team, who's going to enter the transfer portal. Uh, USC or Notre Dame will obviously be coached well throughout the rest of the year. I think their playoff hopes are obviously dead, but I, I do think that this game could um, just be a, uh, basically a, a backyard scrimmage and they're just going to throw it around and have some fun. So uh, probably the over here, 57 over 57 for me. Great ideas. The 10th ranked Oregon Ducks are coming to L.A. to take on the UCLA Bruins. Some say the game of the week. ESPN says the game of the week. The game day crew will be set up there. That'll be an early kickoff time in L.A. for game day, probably 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Ducks in L.A. to play UCLA. UCLA is a short favorite here, about one and a half, a total of 59. Ian, what do you got? Chip Kelly bowl right here. Chip Kelly's had probably had this game circled. He's got his best <laughs> squad. He's got Oregon coming to his place, his new place. Uh, I, I think this is the game that UCLA is pointing at. This is the game that UCLA wants. This is the game that Chip Kelly wants. He's going to have his best game plan. He's going to have his guys ready for this. I think UCLA, UCLA is going to come out victorious here. Tyler. Yeah, I actually have tickets from the beginning of the year on UCLA to win the division. I thought they had the best team in the Pac-12, um, kind of sneaky with all the returning players, but that loss to Arizona State, the defense looked horrible. Uh, they were giving up big play after big play after big play. Uh, we were actually on the wrong side of that game, but uh, long story short, I think UCLA is probably, I don't want to say the better team, but I think they're the better team in this matchup. Um, point spread indicates that they're very evenly matched, apparently. And I think UCLA comes out with the win on uh, Saturday. Great. Uh, what I feel is the biggest game out West this weekend, the 22nd ranked San Diego State Aztecs are going West to play Air Force in Colorado Springs. Air Force has been tough, tough, tough this year. No one wants to play the Falcons. San Diego State is ranked, but San Diego State is getting points here. Air Force minus four, a total of 40. This is our last game in rapid fire. Ian, what do you got? Yeah, this is this is one of those games that sticks out as well. I got a ranked road team going into the Air Force, going to altitude there. San Diego State has been solid. They've gotten wins, but they don't have the talent level that they used to have in San Diego State. And what Air Force does have is a diverse offense. Air Force is an option team, just like the, the all the Armed Force um, schools are, but Air Force has a little bit more of a dynamic passer at quarterback this year. They've been implementing that. They've been winning games, and you know they both predicate on defense. The over unders at forty, and San Diego State is a defensive team, and that bodes well into Air Force. Usually, the option teams, the teams with uh, Air Force, Army, and Navy, usually have smaller linemen, and it's really hard for them to play behind. So when they get against offensive teams. They struggle because it's, they can't play catch up. But they get defensive teams. That's their game. That's exactly how they like to play. San Diego State is a defensive team. And I think Air, that's going to play right into Air Force. Air Force is going to be able to use that offense. I think Air Force could come away and cover that spread. Tyler. Yeah, I've been on Air Force all year, um, five and two against the spread. I think playing a military academy school is – um, tough to begin with because they're disciplined. They don't commit a lot of penalties. So you don't get free yardage. You don't get, you know, extra third down opportunities converted to first down on a penalty. Uh, obviously the triple options hard to defend air forces is, is a good team. They beat Boise state. They've been covering all year long. San Diego state is four and two against the spread um, as well. But last week against San Jose state, they did not impress me. That might've been one of the most boring football games um, anyone has ever watched. If you want to watch a boring football game, go watch that 19 to 13 double overtime battle. Uh, it was a real barn burner. You, you missed a, a thriller. Um, so the way I see it is air force, um, they're a cover machine and I, I think they're going to be well disciplined and I think discipline wins football games going into altitude is not easy. So San Diego state didn't have a week to prepare, you know, with oxygen masks and whatever else you want to prepare with in, in 
practice. So they were, they were playing a game last week. Um, I think air force takes care of business. Both my guys on the air force Falcons, that's going to wrap up rapid fire. It's also going to wrap up the line movers network. Thank you again for joining us on the line movers network that wraps up uh, our college football podcast week. Number eight line movers network volume number six. Keep following us on all the social media platforms. For my college football experts, Tyler Liddick, Ian Robbins, I'm David Dorman. Follow along at the Line Movers Network. Enjoy the games. Good luck. Thanks, guys.